In this episode, I sit down with Lucas Pinto, who is the team lead of the Lucas Pinto Real Estate Group out of Seattle. Today, we talk about the importance of running your business like a business, meaning you have to know your numbers. As well, we talk about the added value of having a healthy mindset and body to grow a successful business. We also unpack his tips for creating daily rituals in order to hit your real estate business goals. Now, if you find value in content like this, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button now. And without further ado, I'm your favorite realtor out of San Francisco and the founder of the Homeward Associates Group, Sean Kunkler. Lucas, what's happening, man? What's happening, Sean? Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and and hopefully we we get to provide some value to your audience. So. I think so. Um, let's kick it off with super basic in a couple sentences. Who are you and what do you do? I'm a realtor based out of Seattle, Washington. I have a real estate team here. We do a little over $100 million in sales. I'm also a real estate investor. I have uh, 23 doors. Uh, I'm an LP on a ton of uh, multifamily deals as well. And I'm also a mentor and a coach to other people who are trying to replicate uh, the same sort of success in real estate or in other areas of business. So So busy is an understatement, basically. We don't need a lot of sleep around here, but I love what I'm doing. So that really helps, man. When you're when you get up and you're excited and you're tired you just power like there's a different it's a different level of like fuel you have when the mind and the body is tired but you're aligned the spirit takes over and uh i think there's something to that yeah you sound like a former or current athlete it definitely sounds like an athletic mindset you got to push through it more often than not people give up they give up way too early or they give up right at the finish line and you're like you just if you just pushed a little bit harder and you'd have or get to wherever that point is that you want to go. So with your team, I know there's a lot of different, like huge categories we're talking about here because you have obviously so much going on, but with your real estate team, unpack that one. How big is it? Where are you located? What are you doing? So I got a team of seven people. Uh, we service most of King County, some Snohomish, some Pierce County. Um, and the team is, is made up of, uh, so seven salespeople, uh, one executive assistant, one virtual assistant and a part-time videographer slash, uh, content creator. And, you know, probably about 65% of our business is buyers, about 35% sellers. Uh, this year we're on track last year, we did a little over a uh, hundred mil this year we're on track to do about 120, 130 million in sales. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's the real estate business that, that the little team that, that we've scaled out and we continue to scale out. Um, I, I see the real estate team as, um, you know, as a platform for people to launch their real estate career and hopefully build a good real estate career. I don't see, uh, I tell all my realtors, you know, I don't see real estate sales as the end all be all. If you're doing real estate sales, you should have a plan in place to, you know, build something while you're doing this. And that's where the real estate investing comes in, right? Um, nowadays, I'm probably, you know, my focus is probably, you know, 40% on the team and, and probably 40% in investing. Um, and, and 20% on the coaching and mentoring. It's an interesting breakdown of your agent to support staff and then your ratio of coaching and being in the space and then focusing on your investments. And it is a very smart strategy to diversify your portfolio because if one thing goes down, you then have insulation against market turmoil, which we all saw when interest rates spiked as compared to what they were hovering around the, the one and 2% for, for those few months, which made for a very crazy time unto itself. So your role on the team, you're more CEO slash coach. Is that 
kind of an appropriate title? I've noticed that in real estate, you know, especially for newer realtors, it's not really about the how. So many newer realtors are worried about how to do something. Uh, but really, what I've noticed is more about the who, meaning what type of realtor are you becoming? How do you show up to meet your clients? What kind of habits do you have? How disciplined are you? Are you making your calls five days a week or just when you feel like it? So, you know, my, my role within the team is to, to basically look from a high level view and give people feedback as to their business. Um, and we track everything. Everything is powered by CSU. So we have all of our metrics, all of our numbers. And my job is just to give realtors on the team real life feedback, coaching, mentoring. If you have a deal that, that's falling through, what exactly do you say to, to your client, to the other realtors? So that's kind of my role within the team. And we get deep, man. Every single realtor on my team is like, they're like family. You know what I mean? I know their goals. I know what they're trying to accomplish. I know their whys. I know what makes them tick. Uh, so, you know, my job as a leader and my promise to them is whatever goals you set for yourself this year, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. And I'm going to make sure you don't miss your goals. And at times that gets uncomfortable, right? Um, but that's, uh, I'd rather you be uncomfortable and reach your metrics and reach your goals and live the life that you want than not. The alternative is, 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 a uh, is not as desirable, right? I'd rather you go through this uncomfort now and get the result that you want. And not for nothing, but they've set up the goal. And so the discomfort is usually brought on by not working towards the goal. And I love that you guys are tracking metrics. I, I, I feel that's probably one of the most overlooked components to sales in this industry is people just don't know their numbers. Right. You think you just hear it in conversation, like, oh, I hosted an open house and I only got one lead. And you're like, okay, but how many open houses are you hosting a month? And how do those back into the big picture? And then when you look at it, you're like, one lead is actually not bad. Two to three is normal. One's still not bad. Zero's bad. And if you track it, you can measure it. And if you can measure it, you can grow it. And just so you have some context, for every 12 people we meet in an open house, there is a transaction in there if you're following the process and asking for the sale. That's how granular we get on our numbers. We know that for every 10 Zillow leads you get, you should convert, should be converting 15% of those leads. And we have, we have years of data and metrics that we could relay back to a realtor and we could pinpoint pretty accurately why they're not succeeding or why they're not reaching their goal. Then at that point, it's just, it comes back to, do they want to, do they still want that goal or has the goal changed? And if the goal has changed, I just need to know. Yeah radical truth and radical honesty is is needed in order for people to progress and move forward and i i, I love this man i have a i have a blast doing it i love to see people win i love to be I, I love to see someone reach a goal they thought they couldn't do you know that that's a rewarding feeling and and then yeah i i i continue uh I, i'll continue building the team and whoever wants to be a part of our our mission i would love to have them on board it's funny when uh, you made me think of uh, uh, Priyanka, who's on my team. I, when she made her very first sale, it felt like my very first sale. I was, I was as happy as when I when when I did it first for myself. It's such a from a leadership role. It is such a uh, it's such a phenomenal experience when you watch somebody work their tail off and then they win, and you're like you're right there with them. You're like, I knew you can do it. It's just a matter of putting in the time, putting in the effort. You as a leader, you understand this, man. Like that is, for me today, it becomes more rewarding than the money itself. Yeah. Because the reality is this. I know for a fact we're changing lives. I know for a fact if you're, if you're building a good team, you're changing lives. Um, and, it, and I see that past, you know, past the money, past anything else. I see it as a calling. You know, I see it as my purpose. Um, at least for this stage of my life, right? So I was talking to Courtney Smith Wiesmore, who built, she built a really significant team in San Diego. And now she is at Compass teaching others how to build 
really, really fantastic teams. And at the core of who she was describing herself to be, she's like, I'm just an entrepreneur. Like I, it's, it's in my DNA. This is what I do. And I, I feel, which is very parallel to leadership is there is a different level of, of reward that you get from being in, in this role. And it's not for everybody. Some people, some people are drawn to it. Some are, I think it's, I think it's fine. Like it's not good or bad. It's, it goes back to your point of find your, find what's driving you, find what your why is and get in that lane and just mash on the gas pedal. That's it. To kind of backpedal now, I, I, again, I hope people are picking this up, but I love that, you know, offhand your numbers of open houses and conversion rates, because that's, again, it's measurable when people, when, when people are on your team are working, they, they know what normal expectations are for us. Again, we're, I mean, we're in a completely different market. San Francisco is its own beast as is Seattle. And so ours is generally speaking, you can, you can typically get two to three names leads at an open house. And then of those it's 10 will actually come in one of one out of 10 will come into the office and then of that, you have a basically a nine out of 10 chance that you're going to close them. Nice. Those are our numbers. Um, so anybody can basically jot those down and, and use those as a data point. But again, if you're working in Ohio and you're getting a hundred people through, your numbers are going to be radically different than our numbers. It's different from market to market, from skill set to skill set. What's important is that you track it and you understand your numbers. And then once you know your numbers, you could start, hey, uh, you could start A, B testing. Hey, one open house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this dialogue, this other open house, I'm going to try this. Which one performs better? It, it's a real estate. The, the mistake that most realtors make is they look at this business as, uh, they don't look at it as a business. Uh, and that's, that's a problem. You know, like we run it like a business, you know, we understand for every dollar that goes out to marketing, what's, what our return on investment is. We understand what the sales funnel and conversions look like. And, you know, the sooner you could start, the sooner a realtor could start doing that and treating it seriously and tracking numbers and looking at data, the more success they will have. And not only the more success they will have, the easier it will become. Because you take the randomness out of your business and now becomes something uh, repeatable and consistent that you can replicate. And I would stack onto that is to go back to what my, my earlier point is figure out who you are. Mm. If that's not your strong suit, find a team lead that's their strong suit and just basically learn from them, work with them and figure out if, they, if their system's minded and you're not, find somebody who is. Or vice versa. If you're hell bent on on leading and building a team, then surround yourself with people who are doing that. I would say the the game changer for most agents is to think of your business as a business, and then I think the other thing is to realize that you're not good at everything. You suck at something or a whole bunch of some things, and you got to go figure out how to hire, or be around or get training, whatever it is, but you just have to have those hard, honest conversations with yourself is, I'm really good at this thing, I'm not good at this thing, and now I need to fill this hole over here, and how do I fill it? And again, it's like a business. All aspects of my business, I am not good at. I am awful when I sit down at the books. Like, I don't, I'm I'm terrible when it's like the granular numbers. I have a bookkeeper who is all over me, and she's like, there's five cents missing from this account. Where's this number? And I can care less, but she's all over. And that's what I need. I need somebody who's like that. And so finding those right players to be around is critical. And I would imagine those seven agents that you have, they have vastly different personalities, not just because they're people, but I, I guarantee that they have completely different goals. They want to work in different markets. They just, they're all over the map and tailoring it is important. You hit it, man. You're absolutely right. And, and really think, r- really quick thing. I, I've noticed for me throughout the years that every business, so every business I start going forward and just about every business I have today, I'm a huge believer in partnerships. 
I think the ability to to pull people together and figure out like my realtors, they're they don't work for me. My realtors are business partners with me. Like we have a like we buy real estate together. We invest in properties together. Like we, you know. So I think partnerships uh, are are absolutely critical, and I think most people shy away from them because there's a there's a sense of of. Uh, I think to a certain extent it is a bit of ego, right? They want to have their, but but I believe human beings get much further together than they do apart. So I think if the goal is big enough and large enough, you're going to need more than two hands to lift it. And that's just the way it is. Like you're, you're inevitably going to need help. Mark Cuban, I remember watching Shark Tank years and years and years ago, and it's, it's always stuck with me, but he was arguing with somebody who was splitting hairs about, giving up a percent and he's like look do you want to rather have the full grape or a piece of a watermelon that's a great analogy i love mark cuban <laughs> it's so good and it's and and i think that's the ego component is like no i want the whole thing and you're like yeah but the whole thing is tiny you can have a you can have a piece of this really big thing in the and with partners to go back to my my previous rant is they should have attributes you don't have so they're going to see things that you don't see, and they're going to support you in ways that you don't even know you need supporting. And that's that's where magic really starts to happen. I agree. I agree. You can tell me if this rumor is true, but it sounds like I've heard that you're getting more into the coaching avenue of things. Yeah, yeah. So uh, launched uh, my coaching mentoring program about four weeks back, um, and I was shocked to see – it was something that I, the idea came because I would, I'm pretty active on Instagram and I would get people sending me messages with questions, new realtors. And they always ask, Hey, can I, can I pick your brain? Can we sit down on a zoom call? And a large portion of my week was being spent on zoom calls with new realtors. And I was, I would always say yes until it got to the point where I'm like, okay, well, I'm willing to help out. But we're, we're, we're going to need some, some guidelines and some clarity around this. So I launched a coaching program within one week. Uh, I had six people who signed up. So I was happy to see that, hey, there, there is some sort of demand for this thing. Yeah. The group of people that we brought together and seeing these guys really take control of their lives has been humbling. Um, and, and the idea of the coaching program is we focus on three things. We focus on your mindset, we focus on fitness, and we focus on real estate. And you start, we do an initial Zoom call, we figure out what your goals are. Once we have your goals, we create daily habits. We input those habits on your own training app. You get a personalized workout program. You get a personalized nutrition program. And everything, just like I do with my realtors, everything is tracked and accountable for it. So at the end of the week, we're going to track what your performance was. Did you do the daily habits that are bringing you closer to your goals? Yes or no? And at the end of the month, you get a percentage score. If you're hitting 100% over the course of a few months, there's no way you're not going to hit your goal. I don't care what that goal is. The problem, though, and what you start to see is that everyone has a goal they have. They come in, they're charged up, and then what happens in week three? Well, you're tired. Well, maybe today I don't have to, to make the calls or, or go on the appointments or, or wake up at the certain time. Um, and, and really, we hold the whole group holds everyone accountable. And it's been it's been awesome to see, man. I got guys in there that lost like 15 pounds within the first few weeks. Their attitude completely changes. They show up differently, um, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So that's that's the whole coaching program. That's amazing. And so it's not just the physical component, but the the real estate transactional component. It's real estate mindset, fitness, and what I've noticed is you know for someone newer in real estate. Good luck being successful in real estate if your health is absolute shit and you don't have self-confidence. Good luck. That's going to be very tough. Some people could pull it off. It's a lot easier when you're feeling good about yourself. It's a lot easier when, when you, your habits are aligned with your goals, right? So we touch on all things. I got guys in there that, 
you know, uh, top producers, guys earning, you know, 1.2, $1.3 million a year, they sign up for the program because they want a bit more accountability. They want other people are in there because they want to be in a circle of people that are operating at a higher level or, or making more money. So everyone in there has a little bit of a different interest. Uh, but it's, it's been, it's been fun to watch it grow and it's been, been fun to see the changes and the impact. Um, and I'm, I'm humbled by it, man. I, I really, you know, I've been having a lot of fun doing it and I've been having a lot of fun seeing, seeing people change their lives. That's my core philosophy right there is motion creates emotion. And so if you can physically exhaust and work on your body, you're going to show up mentally totally different. I always say, I want the hardest part of my day to be my workout. So then everything else is, is easy after that point. Those conversations with clients where you're negotiating and going back and forth and dealing with problems, that's easy compared to the grueling workout you have. You know what the beautiful thing is? You're a top producer and every top producer, a top, uh, top operating person in their industry I've spoken to, they all have that in common. Every single one of them, or, or in some way, shape, or form, the workout might be different. Some guy might might like bike, but they all have that same attitude. So, if for someone getting into real estate, they're trying to be successful in a very challenging industry. They need a foundation. They need a baseline. And I think a, a, a set routine of habits gives them that baseline, so that I can then teach them the scripts and, and the how, right? Because everyone is so focused on the how, but if you don't have the who, which is the foundation, the how is irrelevant. Discipline is, it's a perishable skill and it's a transferable skill. And so if you're physically pushing yourself to go to the gym X amount of days a week, like I work out five days a week, if, if I could push myself there, on those days, we all have them where you're just like, oh, hell no, I'm not, I do not, I have no energy, I'm tired, I had a crappy day, that I do not want to go do this. And you're like, I usually just make deals with myself. I'm like, all right, how about if I just put on my sneakers? I'm like, all right, let me just do that first. And then I put on my sneakers and thankfully my gym is, is in my house. And so I'm like, all right, I'll just go in the gym. And then I go in there and I'm like, all right, I'll just... I'll just put on some music and I basically just do micro challenges and I just give myself little and I'm like, all right, I'll just do a set. And then I, I start getting into it and then I, I change motion creates emotion and then you start feeling the workout and then you're like, I'm here. I might as well just keep going. And then you do. And it's the same with cold calling or working open houses, whatever it is. If you just give yourself those micro challenges to your point, break down your metrics, know your numbers, I mean, you can proceed. That's it, man. I would say the vast majority of people that I've talked to are athletes or top performing athletes or top performing. One of the guys is a, uh, the, like the assistant coach of the national Taekwondo team, like it just phenomenal people. And so the physical component is a very large component that I feel that often gets overlooked. And I, I, I honor that you've spotted it and you're applying it and helping these people with it. Smart, very smart move. You stack these habits over the course of weeks and months and years. And before you know it, you're, you're living the life that you want. So I, I think I looked around the real estate industry and I'm like, man, you know, like, or, or just online, not just in real estate. Uh, you know, the thing that sales is, is any, the idea of making anything easier. Right. Thing has been easy, but it's been worth it, right? You th I think about my business, I'm like, it wasn't exactly easy, but damn, it was worth it and it was rewarding. So I think the idea of facing adversity, leaning into it, uh, realizing where you have that adversity, because a lot of times, and this is where the mindset comes in. A lot of times you don't even notice the things that the subconscious things that are holding you back. Right. And I think when, it, when you start putting it on paper and you start looking, you know, that's why we have the app so we can look at every month and say, well, you said you wanted this, but your actions are saying something else. You're disaligned. 
you know, like it, it's, we got, we got to be, we got to be brutally honest with ourselves in order to be the best versions of ourselves. It's funny that we're having this conversation because I've been trying to lose a little bit of body fat for a couple of weeks and I plateaued doing the same cardio, doing the same workouts. And then probably last week I thought ah, I have to start tracking my food again because I'm clearly taking in the wrong amount of calories. Macros are the game changer, Sean. I'm telling you, macros is the secret. And it goes back to your point. If you track it, then you could, then you know, you know exactly what's happening. And I know the moment I start tracking it within two days, I'll, I'll immediately be like, ah, it's, it's usually the post dinner snack. That's, that's what it is. Well, I, I noticed that for me, uh, the long at nighttime, right. My decision, I make usually that's the point where I'm exhausted. So I know that's when I got to watch out for the sweets, for the snacks. Uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, my kryptonite is cereal. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> After dinner, I'll be like chilling out and just like hanging out with the kids. And like, I just get a hankering for a bowl of cereal. And, and that's, that's my kryptonite, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, mine is cookies, man. Any sort of cookies. If, if luckily for me, like I, I, I don't have kids and I live alone. So like my fridge has nothing. Right. So like by the time I want a snack, I'm like, well, there's nothing for me to eat. So I'll just go to bed. <laughs> and that, that's how I get out of it. But I'm, if, there, if it's around, if there are sweets around, I will eat it. I lived alone for a decade and the same thing. Like I wouldn't eat it because I wouldn't buy it. And so I didn't have a problem with it. Like I would buy really good, clean, high quality food and, and not have to worry about it. But having two teenage boys in the house, Oh my God. It's just, I actually made them. This is funny. I made them get like, they have their own cabinet with all of their candies and cookies and stuff that I just, it's in their own cabinet. So I don't go in there. I don't look at it. And then in my mind, it doesn't exist. And so I'm not as tempted, but I do see the cereal. So I, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but that goes to creating your environment, which that's an important piece too. Do you, let's, let's kind of talk about that. Do you encourage people like when they make calls, do you encourage rituals so their habits will stick a little bit better? Point. So if you look at my Instagram, I post everything that I do every day at the same time. And I share it with people. It's always on my story. Every day you're going to see a 4.50 AM time. Every day you're going to see the room that I meditate in. Every day you're going to see the book that I'm reading. And I put it's always the same. It's consistent. It's repeatable. It's also mundane. It's boring, but it works, right? And, and the reason why it works is because there, there are certain mental triggers that certain spaces have, whether you notice it or not, whether it's conscious or subconscious. So yes, I recommend when you go to do your prospecting, you do it from the same place every day. You do it the same way every single day. You do it the same time every single day. It will make it easier for you to build that habit and for you to bring the right attitude and right energy to whatever you're doing. So yeah, I think that's huge. When I first got into the business, I was broke. <laughs> Barely had two nickels to rub together. And so I made a pact to myself after listening to Barbara Corcoran, I would buy suits after every closing as my, that was my reward. And then that's why and how I started to get into wearing suits. But then when I started wearing suits, talking about the physical piece, I started to feel really good. I felt like a closer because I got this for closing. And so it started to subtly shift my mindset. And so my environment was, it's also little spaces in either my home or in my office, even in my car. Like I have these little ritual spaces that are protected spaces. When I drive, I don't, I rarely, rarely listen to music. I just, I put in audiobooks. I'm like, hey, I'm sitting in this thing for 20 minutes, 60 minutes. I want to learn something. I love that you brought that up because that, I mean, think about that mental habit loop you created. You have a closing, you buy a suit, therefore you solidified the idea that you're a closer. 
you're wearing that suit, so you're more confident. Yeah. I not notice it, but everyone has certain habit loops or thought processes that repeat in their mind subconsciously over and over and over again. Some of them are fantastic, and that's why you see people that that every year looks like they're doing better and better, making more and more money, happier and happier. And it's also it can also work in the opposite direction. So you know what what I try to do with with my team. With, with the coaching clients is identify things like that in their life that because it's easier from the outside looking in, right? I need my own coach myself to help me out in my broken thought processes and point things out that I don't yet see. But I love that example, man. That's a great example. And I, I think if we could set more of those up for ourselves in different areas of life, we will be uh, living the life that we want to more and more. To stack onto that, I, I've referenced this before, but Michael Jordan, no matter how many games he won for how many years, he always had a coach. And I, I feel no matter what level or what you're doing, it's so imperative to have, like, I have a business coach. I have who's on the, who was actually on this podcast, the trainer who writes my programs. I sat down and had a conversation with him. He's been a friend of mine for over two decades. He's a professional bodybuilder. Like that's a completely different game changer when you have these people in your corner who are like, Hey man, here's your hole in your game. For years I've thought about this. I'm like, man, what is it that some people just kind of, some people get it. Some people don't. Is it that some people are lazy is it that they're not smart enough? And I don't think it's any of those things. I think the majority of people are just simply arrogant. Like, like think about it. Like, if you're trying to learn something, if you're trying to improve an area of your life, wouldn't it make sense for you to go to a person that is currently at the level that you want to be, that has the blueprint, and just go to that person and say, hey, what are you doing? What works for you? What should I do? So, like... I only get feedback and mentoring from people that has accomplished or done something that I'm looking to accomplish. It only makes sense. And I think everyone needs that. And I think that is the easiest way for you to hit whatever goal you're trying to hit. Uh, but, but the sad truth is the majority of people, you know, they look at it. Like, for example, I gave this example the other day. Someone might go to a boxing gym. They read one, one book on boxing. They watch some YouTube videos. They go to a gym. They see Mike Tyson in there. They're sitting on the sidelines and they're like, well, you know, I read a book on boxing. Can he really hit that hard? That, that's how arrogant a lot of people are. It's a fallacy. And we need to identify when we're falling into that trap and get out of it. I think that I think the easiest way to achieve what you're looking to achieve is to find someone who has done it, who has the blueprint, and who will hold you accountable. And we all need that, myself included. There's a lot of false gurus out there, but it's it is very easy to find those groups and communities to be around. There's countless books, there's countless coaches, people can reach out to you directly. Like there's there's a lot of access. The the internet has completely changed the game in that category. Um, I can't even tell you how many books I consume on a regular basis. That's for me to just keep my subconscious moving in the right direction. Because I feel like my good friend Jen said this. She's like, what you put in under pressure will get squeezed out. And so what I want to get squeezed out is this good stuff, this stuff that I've, I'm studying, practicing, learning. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's just, it's just practice. But uh, man, that was a really quick 40 minutes that railed by. Thank you for your time. And if somebody wants to reach out to you directly, what's the easiest, best way for them to find you? Yeah. Instagram is, is where I'm most active in. My Instagram is Luke. L U K E underscore is underscore winning. Luke underscore is underscore winning. Cool. And we'll leave that in the show notes below. Man, thank you. I appreciate your time today. That was a really fun conversation. John, thanks for having me on. It was great chatting with you. And until next time, brother. <laughs>